my name is uh, Jason J. Rock Houston. It's my great pleasure to be speaking with um, guitar shredder Maxwell Carlisle. Um, Maxwell, you're a great, um, great solo artist on your own, right? But you also, these days, are also the lead guitar player for uh, Hellion. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. How about you? I'm doing great. Now, um, th the main reason we're talking today is because um, since we last talked um, in conjunction, I guess, with Metal Express Radio, you now have a great little radio show of your own. So, um, if we could start the interview off talking a little bit about the radio show and how it came to be. Sure thing, yeah. Well, it, it's a new thing, obviously, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it, really excited about it. I had done a couple of these guest DJ things uh -huh. uh, that Metal Express Radio does every once in a while where they'll have a band come on and play, you know, 10 of their favorite songs and talk about the songs, maybe how they've been influenced by them or something like that. And I did a couple of these spread about a year apart and they just both seem to go over really well and you know I got a good response from the station and from people listening so I kind of put the idea in my head that maybe this is something I should pursue in the future mm -hmm. and just the timing was right and so I um, you know myself and, and the guys who, uh, who run Metal Express Radio started talking and they've got some other things that they're working on they're kind of redesigning their website uh -huh. it seemed like a good time That's great. Now, when you record these shows, um, like you record them, you know, in your home, and then you send the you send these guys kind of, um, you know, the audio um, of what you've done, or um, are you doing recording in a professional studio? Is it going out live as you're doing it? No, I, I record them at my home studio. Although, obviously, my I do a lot of recording at my home studio, so it's um, I, I don't know if I would quite call it professional, but um, well, it's, it's, yeah, you know, professional in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that's how that's how a lot of these shows are done these days. Um, I mean e even this yeah. interview is being conducted that way, you know, um, in my home um, as I'm talking to you over the phone. So um, that's that's the easy way to do things these days. Um, now talk about like um, you know how did the first show go? Um, uh, you, you said you've been getting a great response, but talk a little bit about the first show. You know what was it? Uh, do you remember what the topic was and um, how hard was it to put together that first show for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Introducing what I was going to be doing in the future on the show, that kind of thing. And so I, I kind of went through just a variety of songs and bands that was kind of reflective of the stuff that I was going to be playing in the future. So yeah, I had like, you know, I had some Gamma Ray, Judas Priest, and wow, stuff wow. like that on there. And um, yeah, but it, no, it, it went really well. It did, you know, it did take, it take me a little while to uh, to get it together. Cause I, you know, I put together like a, a little intro for it and that kind of stuff so I you know I'm trying to make it um, you know so it doesn't sound like I just you know rolled out of bed and turned the microphone on you know I'm trying to make it you know a little exciting for people to listen to and that kind of thing but it so yeah I got everything ironed out and uh, you know you know, uh, you know like you're saying uh, yeah. you know one of the big advantages of being able to record just on your own is obviously you can work around your own schedule and take your time to make sure everything's really ready to go before it actually goes out live so yeah yeah and see it's, it's, uh, yeah a great thing about a show like this too is like like you mentioned you know just a couple of bands you played on the first show judas priest i mean you know judas priest is legendary and then and they get you know they get all kinds of um 
you know, radio airplay and people, you know, know who they are, but it's great too that you throw in a band like Gamma Ray, you know, that's not as well known as, say, Judas Priest, and then, you know, that's getting one, that's getting a band like that, you know, an opportunity to get you know, a little more exposure than what they might normally get. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's one of the things I'm trying to do with the show is I'm trying to expose people to maybe some bands and songs that they've never heard before or just are not that familiar with. So, I mean, I have great obvious choices like Judas Priest and, you know, Saxon and things like that. But then I've got, um, there, are, there are a few Japanese metal bands that I feature occasionally on there. And I've got, like, a Labyrinth, which is a Spanish power metal band. And, That's cool. That's you know, other things like that that I think is really great stuff that maybe, you know, maybe people just have missed along the, along the line somewhere. Well, that, that, you know, that, that, is, that is really um, cool. And I, I think what makes a show like this cool, too, is... You got a guy, um, you know, but where the host is, you know, an actual musician himself. So, you know, your knowledge of the music is that much, um, you know, greater than as opposed to a guy that, you know, maybe knows nothing about the music he's speaking uh, you know, to. You know, you, um, a lot of these shows are hosted by guys that maybe don't necessarily know anything about the, you know, the topic. They're, you know, a whole lot about the music. You know, they're just getting paid to do a job. So, I think that's what makes a show like this that much more informed. The fact that you're a guy that knows about the, you know, the music you're playing. Well, yeah, and I, I agree. I, I hope that comes across, you know, in the uh, for the listeners and that kind of thing. But I mean, there are even, you know, well, a lot of these bands are bands that are some of my favorite bands. So of course, I'm, I'm very knowledgeable about them in the back catalog. But there are even things that I'm learning as I'm doing, you know, little bits of research. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coming shows like there's a there's a band um, coming up actually on a future show um, called Q5. Q5. Wow. And they had there was an album in the, the mid '80s called Steal the Light. Oh. A great title track on there. But the guy who kind of started that band is actually the same guy who invented the Floyd Rose like tremolo that we oh. have on guitars. Wow, amazing! You know, you just yeah. you just taught me something I didn't even know about. Wow. So I had to go look the band yeah, up I, and everything. I stumbled across that, and I had, I had no idea. And I saw that, and I'm like, wow. You know, I didn't even know that that guy, obviously he would be a guitar player, but I had no idea that he had you know, successful bands and things like that. So, yeah, it was like a cool bit of trivia that I stumbled across. You know, and then, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, I'm sure some people know that, but, I mean, yeah, yeah. most don't. So that's something I can, I can pass on on the show. Oh, well, that, that's cool. Now, now i got to ask, being the guitar player that you are, Max, um, one of my favorite um, all-time guitar heroes has, has got to be um, Richie Blackmore. Um, did that guy at all influence you? And i, I got to ask you, um, what do you think about uh, what he's doing these days with uh, Blackmore's Night? Have you had a chance to hear any of that? I have heard some of it, yeah. Well, as far as, I mean, just to start with your first really question, I would say he's definitely, I've definitely influenced him as a writer. Yeah, yeah. And the way I arrange songs and things like that, I would say indirectly I'm influenced by him as a player because yeah. there are other guitars, other guitarists who have influenced me directly, who were who were picking up on stuff that he developed. I mean, Ingve is an mm -hmm. obvious example of that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Point, I mean, he's um, I mean, the, the way he wrote songs and the instrumentation and just the stuff that he put together back in the day. I mean, that was kind of like the blueprint for, for heavy metal in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. You know, a lot of those Deep Purple songs, I mean, we're talking about songs that have, you know, stood the test time as far as, you know, they're still um, being played on the radio 40, 50 years later after the fact. And and, and if you ask any, you know, um, any up-and-coming guitar player, any guitar player at all, um, probably one of the, the most iconic guitar riffs is that Smoke on the Water riff. Um, I'd imagine that was one of the first ones you ever learned, am I right? Absolutely, yeah. I think Smoke on the Water and Louie Louie. Wow. Louie Louie. And, and so you, you mentioned Ink Fay, and I was curious, um, who are some of the other uh, guys that you grew up listening to as far as um, influence? Because um, when I listen to some of your stuff, Max, I mean, you definitely come across as one of these, like, um, 80 Strutter type guys. I, I, I could have seen if you were um, around back then that um, you, you could have easily been one of these guys um, labeled, like, a, a guitar hero, kind of like uh, along the lines of, you know, Warren Martini or even, like, Vinnie Moore. Um, did any of those guys, um, you know, have an influence on you? Yeah. One generation earlier. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, no, definitely all of those, you know, 80s Strutter guys, as you say, and the kind of the shrapnel artists. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, guys like, um, you know, many more is a great example oh. of that. Uh, Paul Gilbert, of course. Uh, Bruce Vieira, uh, Bruce Vieira yeah. was, you know, the other uh, guy in Racer X. And did some yeah. really, more recently, he's done some really cool solo albums. I mean, Michael Badia was a huge influence of mine. King Jay, of course. Tony McAlpine, Greg Howe. Yeah. Uh, Jason Becker, Marty Freeman. I mean, all those guys. You know, I'm, obviously, I don't, I don't count myself among their ranks, but I mean, uh, yeah. you know, See, and it's kind of interesting because um, you're one of these guys that kind of came, you know, like, because you weren't around, you know, like you said, you were born a little later than that, but, um, so you weren't around back in the Hades heyday when they had all these guitar heroes, but um, kind of an interesting thing that, that I dig about your story is that, that you put out a lot of these instrumental, like, guitar solo albums, you know, and that's how be people first became known of you, you, and then, you know, the last year, year and a half, you've joined Hellion, and I think that's why since Hellion has reformed it, you've... Yeah, you've been one of the main key ingredients to help people really start to take notice of that band. And I mean, of course, then we got guys like Simon Wright and Scott Warren, you know, from Dio. These guys are, um, you, you guys just got a great lineup in that band going these days. Oh, the lineup is awesome. And I mean, it's, it's really cool for me to be working with those guys. Obviously, I mean, they, they have a lot of, you know, so much experience and, and you know, just uh, legacy careers to draw upon. Yeah. The key the driving force in the yeah, band. Key but ingredient, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because because what what I will tell you what I know about the Hellion story is um, like you're saying, um, you know, Anne Anne is kind of a key the key ingredient. She's a she's a focal point. But at the same time, if you look at what the band um, was, you know, a couple of years back, you know, before you before you guys even got involved, it was kind of a, um, the Anne Bullion band, if you know what I mean. And where um, I think she's very smart these days that she has surrounded herself, you know, by musicians such as yourself and Scott and uh, Simon and other guys in the band who are equally as talented as her because it, it makes the band that much stronger. I think it does. And I think one of the, um, this is kind of slightly um, kind of a side note here, but I think one of the positive side effects of the state that the music industry is in is everyone is a lot more interested in touring now than they used to be. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I dig about it. You know, it's, it's interesting that you bring up um, you know Simon's name because, I mean, for, for years you know he was a drummer in um, AC/DC, and, and people think of AC/DC music as pretty um, simplistic. It's almost like every song you know sound, is based off the same three chords. You know what I mean? But but um, now now you got him playing with Jeff Tate on Operation Mind Crime, and he, he he played for years with Ronnie Dio. I mean, there is much more to this guy's playing than just you know um, playing simple three chord songs. You know. Yeah. 
yeah, know, it's yeah. like, you know, uh, me and sometimes another guitar player, and uh, Bjorn on bass, the drums and the keyboards and hands, so it's a pretty good-sized band. So we don't we don't use click tracks, yeah, you know, because yeah. if there's, you know, choirs or whatever, all that stuff can be done with the keyboards mm-hmm. live. You know, um, I, I had a chance, you know, when they first relaunched um, Hellion a couple of years ago to, to talk to Anne and interview her, and um, I thought she was very smart to kind of, um, when she was relaunching the band, put, put out, putting out that anthology CD, because it was a great way, I felt, to kind of reintroduce the band and say, this is kind of what we've done in the past, and we're moving ahead now with, you know, a new lineup, and we're, we're going to go in the studio and work on, you know, a new EP. So, um, as far as the uh, latest Hellion EP, um, are, have you guys been happy with the response you've been getting from that? And um, can we expect, you know, um, like a full-length album and more touring down the line? Yeah, well, as far as the response, we've been really happy with it. Uh, I definitely have, you know, coming into a band like that, where the band's been around a long time and I'm kind of a new guy, Yeah, I was a little concerned with, you know, just the uh, audience response, you know, the, the fans who been fans for a long time, how they're going to take to a new guitar player and, and that kind of thing, but um, it's been great. I mean, the people who've come out to the shows that I've met have all been really cool and supportive, and everybody's really digging, you know, they've really dug the new songs, and I mean, the, the whole package is great, you know, I, I love the album cover and, and all that stuff, but the response has just been, been awesome to it. As, as far as stuff in the future, we're, um, we're working, I mean, we're working on new songs right now, we're kind of, um, I've been doing a lot of writing lately, and Anne's been working on stuff. And, wow, wow, that's cool. Uh, we're, we're kind of constantly, constantly working on things. And to be completely honest, I don't know if the next release will be a full length uh-huh. or if it'll be another EP. Oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, in any event, in any event, yeah. the fans got something to look forward to. That's that's a great thing. And um, oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we're definitely definitely moving ahead with new stuff. And, and you know. Um, you know, going back in time when you first joined the band, I was curious. Um, like you said, you know, you had some concerns because this was an established band that had a huge history. But um, you know, when you first got to work and first started touring the band, um, did she want you to kind of um, go in there and play the you know the older material note for note, or did she kind of allow you to play them you know um, how you see fit and kind of put your own personality into in there? Uh, it was kind of a mixture of both. I mean, when we first started, when I first started working with Anne. Um, and the others, it was it was working on the new material. Yeah. You know, that was kind of the first thing we did. So that was all, you know, that was all pretty straightforward, aside from, you know, the, the normal writing process. But when we started to do the tour, obviously, then that, it was more about, you know, getting the old material down. But mm-hmm. and in, in my, my experience, Dan's biggest concern is just the overall energy yeah. of the Wow, wow, wow. So if, if you have to, you know, if, if you're not going to, you know, maybe play things note for note, that's fine as long as you're out there giving a killer performance. And obviously there are some things which which you do have to do, exa- you know, the distinctive melody. Yeah, of course, of course. Of line, which has to be there, otherwise it's, it, you know, it's not recognizable. Of course, so of course, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I still get, I still get a little room to, uh, to stretch my fingers a bit. Yeah, and, and I kind of, I, I kind of, uh, um, you know, I, I put Hellion up there with the band like White Snake in the sense that, um, again, when she decided to reform a band, you know, she got she got a lot of great players. You know, she could have just um, got a band of no name guys, you know, that weren't e- even equally as talented as her. But she's got a pretty, uh, pretty killer band, I, I'd say these days. So when you guys went in and recorded the EP, what was it like to? Um, again, you're joining this band that's got an established history. What was it like getting in the studio and kind of, um, you, you know, write your own chapter to the band or, you know, kind of put your little input in there or your little influence, if you will, you know? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was really cool. The biggest, um, one of the funnest things for me was uh, in the recording process, especially in the beginning when we were working with uh, this producer, Ken Scott, uh-huh. who's just this legendary British producer. I mean, he's, he worked with, like, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones yeah. and Pink Floyd. Yeah, 
to do things and so working with him was really cool but I think it was just a really good vibe in general just with everybody involved because it had been such a long time since there was a new Hellion record yeah. so I think it was a little bit like you know a little bit like okay we've got a blank slate to work from here that, you know obviously we wanted to create something that was going to fall in line with the other Hellion releases but I think everybody felt they had a lot of uh, a lot of freedom on uh-huh. it to yeah. contribute and it was a uh, yeah it was a great experience I had a lot of a lot, a lot of good memories of that and so these days let me ask you like uh, when you write a riff um, you know that that's usually um you know, when, when you're um, you know, creating new music, that's usually where a lot of the music comes from as, as, a, as a guitar riff, typically. So um, these days when you're writing, how do you know necessarily, okay, this is um, going to be for a, a Maxwell solo CD or if it's going to be, um, this I think would be good for Hellion? That's a great question. Um, I think these days when I write stuff, I've gotten pretty good feedback on it. Yeah. Um, I've gotten a lot of space, or whatever you want to call it, where yeah. I kind of write things pretty deliberately. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I mean, occasionally, you know, like, I'll be whatever, you know, walking down the street, and I get an idea, and I'll record it into my phone or something, but generally, like, that happens sometimes, but generally, the way I write stuff is, is I, I sit down, and I pick up the guitar, and I decide, like, okay, I'm going to write a Hellion song, you know, or, okay, I'm going to write an instrumental Maxwell Prowl song or you know I'll decide first what I'm going to write and then I write it and I generally don't write an entire song in one sitting usually I'll get a basic structure maybe an intro a few riffs and things like that and then I'll come back to it uh, in a few days uh-huh. I do that a lot and I, know, and I know in the past too you made some guest appearances so correct me if I'm wrong but um did it, did you make an appearance on it was either the latest David Schenkel album or, or Michael Langeau Angelo um, album? Yeah, Michael Angelo video. Yes, I did. On his last album, uh, Intermezzo. Oh, okay, okay. And, and what was that What was that like? Um, have you guys been friends for a while and he just kind of asked you to appear on it? Yeah, well, I, I'd worked with him before and that that album took a really, really long time. It was kind of a, it's, it's a funny thing to be talking about it now yeah. because the work that I did on that album had been done like almost a couple of years before that album was even released. Oh, wow, wow. Uh, he had all kinds of, yeah, he had all kinds of bizarre problems, like um, his, there was a flood over in, I mean, he lives in like the Chicago area, and there was a flood, and his house flooded. Wow. And it like destroyed some of his equipment, and so it, um, there were a lot of big delays, basically, what I'm trying to say, there were a lot of unexpected delays for that album. <laughs> so yeah, but I, uh, what, what happened was I, I wrote, uh, I wrote and produced one of the songs and also played a, played a solo on the song too along with a bunch of other guys and uh, but yeah as far as working with Michael um, I've known him for, for quite a few years now and he he did a guest solo on one of my um, one of my CDs back in 2010 actually wow 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 so, yeah so but um, he's I mean I can't I can't say enough good about Michael I mean he's a really uh really cool really down to earth guy and you know he enjoys teaching people and you know obviously traveling the world giving these clinics and and he's also I think he's kind of such a good example in terms of uh, business you know like his the, the kind of the business model that he, that he set up for himself mm-hmm. is, it's really pretty cool I and mean, he's unique and that he he owns almost all of the rights to all of his music which which a lot of musicians don't actually so yeah, that's, that's the other thing like that. But anyway, but yeah, it's, it's been really cool working with them. You know, and that's another, um, you know, that's another a, a good example right there because, again, like you said, a lot of guys don't even own the rights to their own music. And, and, and I think these days, you know, since we're not talking about the 80s, you know, guitar, shredder, heyday, um, you've got to have really something to offer when, you know, you're a guy that does instrumental um, music. I mean, you know, pretty much, you know, uh, if you talk about like guys like Steve Vai or Joe Satriani, they could put pretty much out the thing, uh, anything out there, and people will buy it just because, you know, um, they're just amazing at what they do. But um, you know, you got you got to have something special to offer. You know, um, when you put out an instrumental album, you, you can't just do like ten tracks that sound all the same or sound like an angry bee. You got to really have, um, you know, where each track really stands out on its own. If you know what I mean, Max. Yeah, I think that's true. I think uh, one of the good and the bad thing, but there are so many great guitar players these days. You know, there's some really, really talented guys who, for really no fault of their own in most cases, they just don't get a lucky 
hockey break or they don't uh, get in touch with the right publicist or whatever and, and you know people never really never really hear about them and it's, uh, it's unfortunate but um, yeah I mean I certainly I, I strive to, to do the best I can with my playing and writing and, and then just get it out to people and, you know, I think that's the, the key is just to get your music out to as many people as you can yeah you know and you've been a pretty uh, smart guy in your own um, you know in your own career in your own self um promotion i mean one thing when i first became aware of you max um one thing that really stood out was about the name just of a name alone max maxwell carlisle you know with three x's i, I thought right away uh, this guy is like the triple threat or whatever but um i, I thought i thought it was like a cool idea to have the three x's and, and that that no doubt was kind of an intentional thing but talk a little bit about you know the idea about that is that kind of um what you're saying okay people are going to really take notice of this because I, I think it's a cool idea it's kind of a funny thing. First of all, I, I'll, I'll say this, and whether or not people want to believe me is, is up to them. Uh -huh. my, he, Maxwell, with three X's, Carlisle, is my actual legal name. Really? Wow. Well, that, well, that's... My yeah, my driver's license and everything. So, so there's, there's that. And then, uh, you know, people always assume it's a stage name, but it's actually not. But Oh, that's, that's interesting. So, that, because I got to tell you, the way the logo is, is written, it kind of makes it makes one uh, come to that assumption. But uh, very smart then, you know, go, going with your own self-given name, I think. Very smart on your part. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it made it easy in some ways, but it's, um, I, I, I will tell you, though, it's, it's kind of, I think it's a bit polarizing for people. Because mm -hmm. some people, I, I'll, I'll say this, it, it always gets attention. Well, but, you know, it's working but for you, so you can't. Some people will be like, oh, triple, triple X. Well, you know, the cool thing about, you know, just learning that little uh, part of the story there, Max, is is this, that, um, again, people will, and I'm guilty of myself, I just told you, people will read what they will into just something as simple as a, as a, as a band logo or something, and um, I think it's kind of interesting, let people think what they want, you know, and it kind of makes the legend of a story that much, um, you know, uh, that much greater, but, but it seems to be working for the simple fact that we're sitting here talking about it, and people are starting to know who this guy Maxwell Carlyle is. And part of that, too, is, uh, you know, not just the fact you got three X's in your name, but part of that has to do with, you know, um, the quality of, uh, you know, uh, music you put out. The, 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 you're a very talented guy. I mean, if you were a guy that just um, could shred a million miles a minute, you know, and there was no um, flavor to the music, um, people would not be buying your CDs. But, you know, um, people are buying it because um, they like what they're hearing. So there is that, too. Yeah, yeah. And if it's working, like we said, if it's working, don't. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, keep keep going with what works. But um, now, now I gotta um, turn turn. Um, I imagine you must be an Iron Maiden fan, Max. I'd like to ask if you had a chance to hear the new Iron Maiden album and what you think of it. Yeah, of course I am, and I uh, yes, I have. I, I haven't heard the entire album. Yeah, I've it's, heard it's you know, four or five tracks yeah. from it, and uh, I, I I love it. You know, I think it's great. I mean, I've had it, I, yeah, i got to be honest with you, I've had it for, like, you know, since the day it came out, and me, myself, I'm still just, um, you know, because it's so so long, um, I'm still listening to um, just the, the first CD, but I dig the fact that they um, that they put out, a, you know, a two-CD thing of all new music. I mean, that in itself, fans are getting their money's worth, but um, the other reason I bring up Iron Man, um, for years, they were just a two-guitar band, and, and now for, you know, over the last um, close to 20 years, they, they've been a three-guitar band. I was curious, um... What do you think of um, you know Iron Maiden um, having three ripping guitar players? I, you know, I think it's cool. I mean, I know, I, I know not. Every, I guess not everybody likes it, but mm -hmm. I mean, I I totally understand why they did it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just in terms of you know keeping the people keeping the people in the band. Yeah, yeah. And there's you know, I'm sure everybody contributes in their own way. And yeah. I thought, I'm sure they felt that there was no reason to exclude anybody if, if everyone's yeah. contributing. And the, you know, the other part of that too is with three guitar players, you can I mean, you can do so much musically, especially live. Yeah, you know, yeah, when yeah. you have these, because you know, Iron Maiden is known for the harmonized lead parts and stuff. But even when you're you know when you're listening to the album, even when you're having a harmonized lead, there's still a rhythm guy somewhere in the background on the album. 
yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, you're not, you're not going to get that live unless you've got a third guitar player. So they can they can do things like that, and and you know, and everybody has you know they all have rec- you know recognizable sounds and styles, and it just it makes it makes music more interesting. I, I think it's I think it's a cool thing. Yeah, you know, I kind of dig I kind of dig it. As a fan, for the simple fact, like you said, I, I think the main reason they have three guys in the band is, I mean, they could have easily, um, you know, when Adrian Smith wanted to come back to the band, they could have easily told, you know, Yannick, um, you know, your, your services are no longer needed. But I think it's cool that, that they didn't want to um, sack their friends, so, you know, they kept everybody in the band. And, and again, it gives it just gives it a fatter sound, I think, having three guitar players. And, and again, it, it gives us something to talk about, and it makes them stand out from everybody else in a way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and um, so, um, so Max, I was curious, um, what do you think of, um, you know, a magazine like, um, you know, Guitar World Magazine, I mean, they're kind of, um, you know, as far as guitar players, they're trying to, you know, they, they really um, have helped shape some of these guitar players' career, um, um, are you kind of, have you ever been approached about appearing in the magazine, I was curious? Uh, I've never been approached about being in the print magazine, although I've done, I did an interview a while back that was on the Guitar World website, um, which was cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, obviously, I think it's um, it's a really cool thing, obviously, for guys who are playing guitar and are like uh, younger guys mm-hmm. or guys who are just kind of starting out playing guitar. Mm-hmm. You know, you get a magazine in the mail. If you, have, you have a subscription, you get a magazine in the mail every month, and you get excited about it, and yeah. then you run to your guitar and you. You know, you play stuff, and of course, it's got the transcriptions in the back, yeah. which is really cool. That kind of thing. I, you know, I, I would, I would like to see. I think maybe a little bit more variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in as far as the people they feature, I mean, I think as great as Eddie Van Halen is, I don't think we have to have him on the cover. You know, ten more times the next year, that kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, it, um, it's kind of interesting you bring that up because uh, that's kind of the main reason I was asking your thoughts on it. Because I mean, right now as we speak, I've seen that. Um, uh, somewhere I, I've seen on Facebook, they have a petition going up to try to get Jakey e. Lee on the cover. Now I'm sure he's been on the cover oh, yeah. before. You know, went back in the days when he was, um, you know, with Ozzy. But it's kind of interesting to think, you know, since he's put out, you know, he's returned like 20 years after fact with this Red Dragon Cartel. Um, he hasn't uh, been on the cover once, um, and then at the same time, um, on the latest cover, they got um, Slayer. So that's good too. But you know, a band like that's getting a little more. Um, Features, so I just think they need to. That's the main thing I think with a magazine like that. They need to be a little more, um, you know, give a little more opportunity to some of these uh, newer uh, players that, that aren't um, haven't been on there, you know, ten or fifteen times, like you said. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I, you know, I, I understand that the magazine industry, mm-hmm. you know, similar to the music industry, uh, is, is not what it used to be. And obviously, it's great that Guitar World is still around when some of the other guitar magazines have have gone away. It's just because of you know, lack of uh, subscriptions, but mm-hmm. I feel like it would it would help them out more in the long term if they would just, um, you know, even if they're featuring guitar players that are different styles, like have a, have a flamenco player on there or a jazz guy even, you know, I think that would be would be really cool for people, you know. And yeah. it, would, it would make it a little bit more, um, I, I, I don't want to say less predictable, but I think people would get a little bit more excited for the future issues because it's like, oh, what are, you know, what are we going to get this time, you know? Yeah, because, you know, the, the thing is, um, you know, when I was growing up, I remember when they had magazines like, um, you know, it's going to date me, but like Circus Magazine, Hip Parade, or Metal Edge, and it's a shame that all those magazines went away. I mean, the closest thing to those we have now is like, if, if you go to like Barnes & Noble, you can get your hands on Classic Rock Magazine. They got some of the hard rock and metal guys in there, but... Um, but, you know, again, it's like $11 for a magazine, so you have to really like what's in the magazine to, you know, want to buy it, where, like, Guitar World, they're still out there doing it, so I give them that. You know, and um, earlier we were talking about um, Racer X and, and Shrapnel Records. I think that was a great little um, label, and I thought what was great about a band like Racer X is the fact that they were a guitar-driven band, but they had a, you know, they had a lead singer as well, and... Um, and because um, the, the name is escaping me right now, Max, I'll email you the name later. But Jeff Martin, he's got a great little new band that um, that he has out now. So I think that's uh, maybe something you, uh, worth you checking out uh, when you get a chance. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I'll, um, I'm going to write that down, actually. Yes. And, you know, speaking, yeah. of, uh, speaking of Racer X and magazines, uh-huh. um, have you ever seen uh, Young Guitar from Japan? Oh yeah, I come across and then I seen Ashford on the um, 
you know, internet every so often. But yeah, I'm aware of, of the magazine. I've seen it. They used to have it, I know, in uh, Tower Records when they used to have Tower Records. Again, what's a record store? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, Young, young Guitar is like the premier, I, I don't know exactly why they call it Young Guitar. I'm sure it's some cultural reference. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thing, but like, I mean, it's the premier guitar magazine of Japan. Uh -huh. And they have really amazingly, it's Japan, so they have amazingly detailed transcriptions of songs that are usually, you know, like Dream Theater stuff and things like that, stuff that's pretty advanced. And of course, I've, I've got a few copies of it. The reason Rachel X reminded me is one of the recent issues on the cover was Bruce Vilay and, um, and Paul Gilbert, like they were both together on the cover and they did like a special lesson on a DVD yeah. and all this really, really cool stuff. But of course, the magazine is in Japanese, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit of a problem for me, but <laughs> but no, it's it's yeah, it's really cool. But you know, and, and kind of um, you know, yeah. Yeah, kind of an interesting uh, tidbit here for you, Max. Is um, I recently um, interviewed Jeff Martin about his um, latest band, and um, he was telling me, you know, that he's been trying to get back with Paul Gilbert, but um, Paul Gilbert really has no interest in doing uh, Race Rex these days for the simple fact that um, that he does his solo thing these days. Paul does, and and Mr. Big is very big in Japan, and so you know, um, Mr. Big tours a lot in Japan, and 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 even when they tour here in the U.S., they only do a few months worth of shows and you know and Paul's making big money just doing the Mr. Big show these days um so he says there's really no need to do Racer X for him so um but they were a great little band that kind of um they had their little their little 15 minutes of fame but I think it's a another example of one of these great bands that never really got the exposure they deserved you know yeah yeah I agree I think that's true and if you look at Racer yeah, yeah. I, I, I really do like yeah. I like a lot of the Mr. Big stuff too yeah. so you know I can't uh can't fault yeah, him for that. Yeah, yeah, you know, I love talking to guys like you, you know, talking about guitar players. I mean, Richie Kotzen, he's another great story in the sense that um, people may fail to realize that um, while these days he's in the winery dogs and he's known for doing more ballady type stuff and pop oriented music, I mean, he got his start on Shrapnel um, doing those guitar shredder albums, you know, which is just kind of a interesting thing you know uh but most people may not even know about the guy yeah and you know what's really cool about richie Carson is he's a great singer too yeah i mean i think he Richard. people know him you know for being a guitar a lead guitar player for years but um you know when i think of richie Carson, i think of you know what a what a great uh singer this guy is and a songwriter and it just amazes me that you know that talent was hidden for so many years, and I think that's why it's taken him to get as long, you know, far in his career as he has. It just he was concentrating on maybe um, being more of a guitar shredder type guy, but um, he's he's really a triple threat to me. He can sing and write songs, and um, you know, play lead guitar. I mean, he he's got it all. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, and uh, again, it's like I mean, certainly to guitar players and people who are fans mm -hmm. of, of rock and metal, I think he's. He's a, he's a guy who's familiar, but at the same time, he's not, you know, he's not quite at the level of somebody like Steve Vai in, in terms of, in terms of popularity and that kind of thing, which is, which is too bad, because, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he could benefit from selling a few more records, and people could benefit from hearing his music. Yeah, and, you, and what's amazing, he's got, like, um, a back catalog of, like, um, you know, 15 to 20 solo albums he's already put out, and he's... He's he's doing the Winery Dogs thing now, um, so he's got a huge uh, back catalog of music. And Winery Dogs getting ready to do, put out a new album, I think, next week on October second. But um, you know, talking a little bit about the Winery Dogs, an interesting uh, thing I don't know if a lot of people know is uh, that's a band that Mike Portnoy and Billy Sheehan started originally with John Sykes from White Snake and Blue Murder, and then um, John didn't work out for one other, uh, reason or another, and they they went with Richie. But you know, think about. What that band would sound like if John Sykes was singing the stuff. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, well, Max, again, it's been great talking to you. I talked to you all day. But before we wrap this up, um, we talked a little bit about Hellion, Hellion and the new radio show, which I wish you all the luck with. And um, and I hope people check it out every Thursday, as we were, as we were saying. But um, um, what's the latest with your solo work? Because uh, you put out a solo album a couple of months back, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And what it is actually is it's a it's I won't give you 
give you the whole backstory of how I got to this decision. But yeah. So it's kind of complicated, but it's a combination of brand new original material from, you know, solo original material, uh-huh. and it's also going to be uh, covers also. Oh, now, now let me ask you, uh, that's... Wow, wow, that's a great concept. That's a great concept. <laughs> Nice size, nice size, and you know the cool thing to me, just hearing about it. Um, I'm excited already, just hearing about it because um, to me, um, I already want to buy the CD for two reasons. Number one, it's a Maxwell uh, Carlisle CD, but but um, number two, um, you know, for people that aren't may, maybe familiar with your solo work, it'll kind of introduce it, it, people to okay, here's here's some new music from me, and then I'm doing these cool cover tunes. And, and again, it's it's not going to be a true cover in the sense that I imagine um, they're going to be instrumental versions of, of these songs. Which again, it's it's a little something different to, to um, give to the people out there. I mean, how many times like you know people heard "Smoke on the Water" you know covered for the hundred millionth time? You know, so um, it's a different um, kind of take on things, and I think it makes it that much um, cooler. So people are getting you know a little bit of new Maxwell music and a little bit of some cool covers. So. It, it's a cool idea. Now, Max, um, once this album comes out, any chance that um, you'll be doing um, like solo shows as well? Or have you th- given any thought to like maybe doing any guitar clinics like what you're talking about Michelangelo does and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to do clinics and I would like to do solo shows again. Um, I haven't done very many in the wild. In a while. The, the main thing is that as far as touring is concerned, my main Okay, okay, okay. Uh, well. just, be, just because of, you know, the, the, the draw with Hellion and, the, you know, the places that Hellion can play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a much wider variety of, you know, there's a demand over in Europe and things like that. So that's kind of my main priority as far as touring is concerned. But if I can fit in other things around it, then, then definitely I'll do it. And I, um, I don't have a release date for this solo album mm-hmm. nailed down yet, uh-huh. so... And so, um, just to kind of wrap up here again, Maxwell, um, so you're kind of pretty much, um, you know, on some downtime for the rest of 2015, I, as, but you're, you are working on new music with Helen uh, currently, as you, as, as we sit here and speak, but, um, and, and so do you, you think the Helen uh, CD might, might come first? Uh, that's a great question. Um, it's very possible. Okay, okay. Well, Max, um, once again, I've really enjoyed talking to you, and, and I wish you all the luck with the, um, with the new radio show. And um, I just want to say, too, before I let you go, um, as soon as um, I get off with you, I will email you, because the name is escaping me, but like I said, I, I um, interviewed Jeff Martin a couple, um, couple months back, and, um, and we did a great interview, and he's got a great new band, but he, he just has some, um, you know, maybe you should see about, you know, doing an interview or something with him, having him on your show, because... Um, he just has so many great stories, you know, to tell that I think he'd be uh, make for an interesting show to talk to him. And so I'll email you the name of the band, and maybe I could um, put you in touch with him. But uh, he was just well, actually, you know, you could probably get a hold of him because he's got the same publicist as you. Ah, uh, okay, I, I got gotcha. it. Yeah, so so talk to the Lord of PR. He's he's a man to go through. But um, um, but but Jeff just was he gave me such a great interview, and he's had so many great stories. So I think that would be make for an interesting show. But I'll I'll get you that information if you need it. So thanks, thanks, yeah, that'd be great, man. thanks so much, man, and we'll do it again. Um, I'd like to talk to you again when your um, solo CD comes out, or even the Hellion CD. So let's stay in touch, okay, Max? Absolutely, man. That'd be great. Okay, and, and the interview here should be going up on our site um, probably in early to mid October. So I'll let the Lord um, know when that goes up. And um, if you'd like a copy, I could email you a copy of the interview we just did. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, you could just you can just send the email directly to me if if, if that's easier. And that'd oh, that, be, uh, yeah. I'd love to. 
Uh, that that'll work then. Um, it, it'll be just a, like an MP3 file, the audio, but but you can listen to it and um, and and um, welcome to what you want with it. But um, thanks so much, Max, and um, we'll do it again. Have a nice night. All right, man. Take care. Bye bye.